Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome back to the channel. Now, it's been about six months since I last uploaded a video, but don't worry, I've not stopped. I've not gone anywhere. Um, it's just my wife has now finally moved um, up here with me. Uh, now we've got some heating in the house and the house was a little bit livable. Uh, but she got a job in Manchester and it was turned out as a long way to get to Manchester. It's only meant to be like an hour's drive, but it ends up being like hour and a half, two hours in the morning. It was like two hours to get home in the evenings. So I've been setting up a new online like reselling business, which is part of the stuff behind me, plus stuff everywhere. So we can now we can both work from home, and that's finally sort of making us some money now. <clears throat> so now that's up and running. We're both working from home. I can finally in the new year. Once we've got a bit of extra cash, we can get on with doing some more decorating. But the only trouble is. We had the garage taken down um, last year out the back because it was asbestos and it was pretty much falling down anyway. So we had to pay to get that professionally removed. And the stuff that was in the garage that we wanted to keep is now downstairs in our back room. So with that and with all the stock and stuff we've bought for reselling online, uh, the house is pretty crowded and there's not much room to move things around and just get on and decorate a room. Uh, but while I was going through some of my old stuff I did find when I made the computer desk um, that I'm set on here found the footage for that um, I don't think I uploaded it because I wasn't quite happy with it at the end I mean I was happy with the desk and the way it turned out but there's things I could have done differently like the frame that's underneath I probably would have bulked it out a bit more um, but I'm missing some footage at the end but what I'll do the desk is a mess at the moment but I'll show you the desk when it's finished now but I was going to show you in this video the process of, of making a desk. It's it's quite long. It's it's two meters. It needs two people. Um, and it's got to take two people to sit here with three monitors along the back. So this is a quick video. Well, it's not quick. None of my videos are quick. But it's a video on just this desk I made. It was just cheap as I could. Um, bought one sheet of uh, a full sheet of 18 mil plywood. Had some floor joists left over from when I changed the floor joists in the kitchen. So I just used them for legs and some other plywood for the framing of it. But I've recorded all the beginning bit. It's just the end. So stick to the end and then I will show you what the desk looks like now. But I'm quite happy with it. I had to put a cut of extra braces on there. Anyway, I'd like to say a happy Christmas, a happy new year to all my subscribers, all my old subscribers, all my new subscribers. Even one of my new subscribers that has found another channel that I've started on, which is basically fixing you know, old you know, video recorders and stuff. Stuff we buy from car boots when they say, yes, it works lovely. And then you get it home and they don't have any power whatsoever. Um, so we're starting up another channel with fixing stuff like that as well. But thanks to all the new subscribers that have found me. Uh, thanks to all my old ones for sticking with me. I'm waiting for six months till I upload something. But let's get on with this video. Let's show you how I made this computer desk. Thanks for watching. Today we'll be making a plywood computer desk. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy the video. So our wood has arrived, this is our 18mm thick WBP plywood. Uh, we've also got ourselves some 12mm uh, ply, but that's only good on one face. You can buy plywood, you know, different types, you can have a good one face there, or you can get the WBP ply, birch ply that hasn't quite got all the knots in it. So we're going to be using this side, because it's a lot nicer. This side will be the underside. It's got a load of little little spots and stuff on there that might sand out, but we'll we'll find out. That'll be the underside, so I'm not too worried about that. So we'll get this cut down. We're gonna make it two meters long and we're gonna make it 760 mil in the depth. Just get it outside, get it on the tables and cut it. Uh, I've lifted the uh, wood up off of the table with a couple of blocks of wood. So I don't cut through the tables I've got under there. 
Alright, this is our 18mm uh, pipe that we're cutting. Uh, we've got a mark uh, for 760mm there and also down the other end. up here. So we've placed this board 38mm away from our line which is the thickness from our blade. This is turned off by the way, leave it on. Leave it turned off while you're adjusting it. Uh, so 38mm is the distance from the edge of there up into our blade. So I can now run the edge of the edge of the circular saw along there and it's cut and I cut along my 760 line. We've also set the blade depth to be uh, just a bit thicker than this wood to try and minimise the tear out as well. Just using this other sheet of 12mm uh, ply that I've got as a straight edge. Check make sure your blade is in line with your marks and let's go. Didn't think that out very well. That's the joys of uh, not setting it up correctly. So we've placed another piece of wood, so that one was more sturdy. I didn't take the camera over. There we go. We've got a nice clean cut along there now. All right, and then again for this piece, we're now going to cut this down so it's 300 mil deep because we're going to use that as a shelf. We use that as a shelf that sits on top that we can have um, the computer monitors on and then you'll have like a gap underneath to you know you slide your keyboard out of the way and store other stuff under there so we're just going to do the same and rip this down to 300 mil wide or 300 mil deep and then just um, under our stairs here these are um, some floor joists these are the extra lengths that I've um, I've cut down the lengths of the floor joists that we need to change um, in the floor in the kitchen here but that'll all get changed all the floor joists will be changed all the flooring's getting um, got new floorboards for down here once that wall comes down which is a couple of weeks it's probably already down by the time you're watching this a long time ago so yeah so these are the um, offcuts we had left from the floor joists when I cut them down to size so we're going to cut them down to um, 760 I think let's um let me just check what the height is yeah so they're just um they're 1.7 meters so if we make them um basically so we're going to make them 76 centimeters so we've got plenty there for four legs two 76s 152 so one meter 52 we've got one meter 70 there so We've got plenty of plenty of them to use for legs, so we'll cut up some strips of the 12 mil, probably 100 mil strips, and we'll we'll frame them. We'll frame them around the top of the legs. Perfectly the same height. So I'll cut them down to the size we need. Right, so we've got the pieces. We've got our pieces cut for our structural frame. So these will be the uh, these will be the two long pieces that go the length under the desk underneath. And then we got like uh, two 600 mil pieces for either side, and we'll do a couple across the middle as well. And then. Our four, uh, our four legs, which I showed you before. With the uh, these are leftover floor joist pieces. So basically, cut them to 760 mil high, 
we'll sand them down make them smooth and we'll get them painted white as well also these would be uh, this is the cheap pine it's only got um it's a one good side pine but both sides are pretty uh pretty awful they're nothing like uh they're nothing like the, the desktop the wbp board totally different that's very even the good side is really rough in places and you know they use bits of filler to fill in this is just a off cut i had left yeah the back side's just uh the back side's just a lot rougher you know some of that's actually quite smooth but then you still have got your rough pieces so i think if you know this is going to be painted sand this down painted white you're probably it's not going to look so bad but if you want something on show or something that's going to be a really smooth thing finish then i suggest getting the uh like the birch ply wbp ply it's a lot smoother a lot better finish get this sanded down smoothed off get our frame put together screw our legs to our frame and then we might put some battens on the inside so we can screw to the frame and then we can also screw it up in various places through to the desk. Right, so that's everything all nicely sanded down now. Nice and smooth, that's all ready for painting. Alright, so before we sand our desktop down, or before we sand the sides of it at least, we're just going to go around and fill in all the little holes. There, 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 all the way around, we're going to fill them up with, uh, just going to fill that up with some wood filler. Any old wood filler will do, just go around and fill them all in. I've already mixed this up a bit, but just need a little bit on the corner. Make sure you get it pushed right into the hole. Smooth it out and just leave it a little bit proud. So just leave it like that so you've got something to sand down. So that would just go around and do that to all our holes. Here's our next one. Small amount on there. Just make sure you push it right in. leave it a little bit proud of the surface all right we'll go around and do the rest of them all right now we've got our hole sealed and our cracks that's going to take half out of dry so we'll just get on with sanding the top down and this time you do need to be careful when you're using this plywood because you only have a tiny tiny slither of like the top laminate, the top veneer. So this is really just a quick going over with a 120 grit sandpaper or smoother, no more than 120. And we're just gonna go over it really lightly and smooth it off. Dancing by the lakeside, gonna do it while we're young. So what we're going to do with the top, we're going to, oops. <laughs> also what we're going to do with the top, we're just going to round the edge over slightly. So we're just going to hold it like a 45 degree angle and just go across just to take the sharpness off the edge. We'll do it on the top and the bottom. Doesn't take much. Just to take the sharpness off the edge. 
All right, I'll flip it over. We'll do the underside and hopefully the filler will start drying and we can go around and do all the edges. All right, sanding done. And then we're just wiping it down with like, um, just got ourselves a damp cloth to wipe the dust off, but you can also see it's damp enough. You can also see if you were thinking of putting a clear coat on here, which is what we're going to do. You can see like the changing colour. You can look, see what it will look like. With a clear varnish on it. There, hopefully you can see the difference between that light area there. And then this area here where you can see all the grain that's come out nicely in colour. Alright, so we're just going to make up the uh, frame to go underneath our desk now. So we can attach our desk and our legs. Well, we can attach our legs to this. Now for this, we're just going to use some wood glue. And we're just going to use our tack wires now gun. Fire through some, uh, look like about one inch nails. What you can do to make sure you're going to get your staples in the right place. You just offer up the wood so you can see it. And then mark up. mark up like your midpoint of where your nails need to go into. So, so you can then take the mark this isn't the best square in the world I know yeah, you can just take the mark and then you've got your line where you need to put your nails down the end of there. Just gonna hold them in the middle. Just put a square in there so we're roughly right. So you've got your ends all square and leveled up there. We just take our nail gun. First one didn't go in that well. You really need two hands for this thing. Let's right. make sure that's level in there. Yeah. We'll just tap them down with a nail. You need the kickback on this forces it out, which is why the nails don't go in. You need to try and have two hands to push tight, which is awkward at the moment. You've got your good face, good face pointing outwards. Right now, if we take our measurements again, which are six oh eight. We know now our bars are straight and true. That's it, we just went round, put some extra tacks in there, keep it nice and steady. Just got to tap those first few in. And now, fingers crossed, it should be beautiful and square. Pretty much is. Yeah, it's just a support for our desk to sit on anyway. Once we get the uh, legs in and some extra extra bars that we unscrew the desk, we'll just make sure it's nice and perfectly square when we put it in. All right, just a a quick note on this tech wise. Uh, I read all the reviews. Uh, I think I got it from Screwfix. Uh, I think it's probably nearly eighty pounds. Uh, there was a lot of reviews about people saying that the that the nails weren't being driven in like all the way and that there was lots of jams with it 
Uh, but I've had no trouble whatsoever with mine. I've loaded the nails properly. Um, you can see, yeah, they don't drive all the way in like on that on that first piece of wood I did. But that's because you're not putting the pressure behind it. The, the kickback you get forces your hand back, which then stops the nail going all the way in. Um, if you're quite strong, you can do it with one hand. But if not, if you need to get your, if you just get your second hand behind it and give it a little shove, the nails go all the way in, and they just they only lay a tiny little mark on the on the wood surface, depending on what you what wood you're using. I basically bought the um, tack wise gun when well, I wanted to make the the catio you know, for the cats because we're in a new area. Mrs. didn't want want the cats going outside yet, so she wanted me to make this, and I bought the tack wise. Um, staple gun because it does staples as well as nails to staple all of these on here so imagine all these staples around here all the way down the sides of there and then there's you've got two rolls of like chicken wire here so you've got staples up there like on the bottom wire and the top wire so you've got two double lots of staples all the way along there uh, you know all the way up the side all the way down there all the way along the top all the way along the top of there and plus also the door you know all the way around the door frame so i went probably went through about two three hundred staples on that and this machine only jammed up once or no twice sorry twice it misfired twice and that was it and that was all with um that was all with these staples I think, you know? that's what they uh about 15 mil staples let's see if i can get you a close-up and they've all pretty much you know gone in as far as i need to go i hardly had any that were that were sticking out i mean obviously they're sticking out a bit because they're holding the wire but there were some so you can see that one's just gone sort of below the surface and taken the wire in with it but there's some that i pushed quite hard that actually um went in and snapped the wire in half so it's definitely a powerful enough staple gun nail gun so yeah if you use it right use it right load it up right now you should have no trouble with it so that was actually a really good buy comes in a little carry case and well, that's it duo 35 master nailer i thought it was like 70 80 quid from screw fix right let's tidy up get upstairs start putting this together all right now we've got our frame upside down remember i wrote an f or for the front which is upside down so now the top is there you just want to make sure all your good faces are facing outwards uh, just put like the uh, legs in place and uh, just put them where i want them again you know good if you wanted to leave them as you know plain wood or varnish them or put a clear lacquer on them make sure your your good sides are facing outwards we've got our drill with a four mil wood bit in it uh we've got our screws turbo silver these are four mil by 50 mil so they just probably go into the we'll sink them in we can't sink them a bit so it's probably going to go halfway into the wood so that way we'll do them at diagonal so we'll do one there and then one there and then on the other side instead of doing one at the top we make sure we do it at the bottom and then diagonal to the top so none of the screws will clash all right what we can do just so we're getting our screws right in the corner drill a pilot hole countersink bit Let me take a couple of our screws saying before because you've got the screw up the top here you don't want to be going screwing in there 
because that screw is going to hit that screw. Like so. That's it, done. Nice sturdy leg. Right, just got to do that another three times. We now have all our legs screwed on. So this is our front side on this side. So I need to lift it up and flip it that way. Get a spirit level, see how straight it is. I'll just check our level of that, it's not too bad. That's not too bad, I'm happy with that. That's level enough for me. That way, again, good enough for me. Let's do the diagonal, yeah, slightly out at the front on the bars. Perfectly level, so there so you go, that is level enough for me. I'm happy with that. What I'll do, I'm going to get the top on, um, I'm going to give the top a coat of the polyurethane uh, clear coat, see what it comes out like, and it needs six hours to dry between coats. So I shall do that now. I shall go and get the top, we'll put the top on, put the polyurethane on. For the first coat, we're going to need to do about three coats of it, so that's 18 hours in total of drying time. And we'll go and get the top, put it on, see what it looks like. This thing weighs a ton. Ooh. I don't think there's any way if you left this desk together, that you'd be able to lift it downstairs. It's definitely a good idea to make it so it comes apart. Right, let's on the leg there. Right, let's put this in place. Oh no, there we go. It's going to be a pretty big desk by the time we get the top on there and then the monitors will be sitting up probably about this high. We're going to go and sit down for a minute then we're going to come back and varnish this thing. So at least it's got a coat to dry overnight and give it a second coat in the morning and then I can give it, give it its third coat sort of early afternoon tomorrow and then by tomorrow night, yeah, hopefully it'll be usable. Cup of bloody tea. Yeah, I'm not sure if I um, pressed the record button when I gave this the first varnish. But anyway, I've given it the first varnish. Definitely needs a second coat. Probably a third. Like you can actually feel the um, the grain has risen a bit, so though it was sanded smooth, it is a bit grainy. That's our shaft that we've varnished as well. It's definitely brought the grain and the colour out. So we're just going to give it a, a second coat of varnish now, and then we'll um, sand that down and give it a final coat. So as always, don't shake the tin, just stir it. You don't want to get air bubbles in there and the air bubbles will obviously go onto your table. So just a nice gentle stir, you don't want to whisk it up and put air bubbles in there. Right, just get a good amount of varnish on your brush, tap it up off, tap it off on the sides, you can see a hair on the edge of it, and then we're just going to lay it on nice and smoothly. Yes, I should be using a bigger brush than this, I know. Make sure you get it all the way to the edge. So our first coat was quite light, but this one we're going to hopefully make it a little bit thicker. So after you've brushed it on, you just need to go through and lay it off. Smooth out all your, smooth out all your brush marks.
Yes. Put your brush in your bag. As much air as you can. Zip it up. We're good for next time. Right, now here we are. The final coat. Uh, you've got a lot of very rough patches on it. It actually feels like it's a rough as sandpaper. But what that is, I think that's all the fine little bubbles in there and any little wood fibres that are just showing through. I mean, there's places on the, this table where it's, you've got super smooth areas. But it suggests on the tin to give it, um, you know, just give it a light sand before your final coat. So that's all we're going to do now. We've got 120 grit sandpaper. I'm going to do it by hand because I did a test piece and uh, I did the test piece with a machine with my random, random orbital sander and uh, it did take the varnish off very quickly so I'm just going to go lightly with 120 grit we'll go over it take all these little sharp bubbles out and then we can give it our final coat uh, just take this easy at first hardly putting any pressure on there you just want to take those little rough spots off and that is all that is pretty much doing it remember to go with the grain and you can actually see if I bring it in closer you can probably see the tops of the there you can see there with the that's just where the bubbles were you can see all the little dots so we'll just continue with this now I think with the last coat we'll, we'll just make sure we put it on nice and gently and don't get any more, get any more bubbles on there. Didn't take too long at all. There are a couple of little hairs that have been caught in there that have now come out. So I'm just get a Damp cloth, there's maybe some white spirits. I'll just wipe some dust off. Now get some white spirits and just go over there, clean it off. And that's now ready for our final coat. So we'll just do the same on the desktop now, light sanding. Our old brush out, still nice and flexible, not dried yet. Yeah, the final coat now. Then we're going to, you know, this last coat, we're going to take our time on. You know, make sure we're not putting any bubbles in there, make sure, well, there are bubbles, you just lay it off, run the brush through it, just take your bubbles out. I'm just going to make sure this top layer is perfect. But yeah, so this time, you know, make sure we sort of lay it on in one in one go. We're not going to like lay it on backwards or forwards, backwards or forwards. Dip your brush halfway in, knock a bit off the edge. I'm just going to make sure this is you know as smooth as we can get it, and make sure everything is covered. Which with this tiny little brush will take longer. Than if I was using a obviously a three inch brush. But this time we want to make sure there's no air bubbles in it or anything. Should have done my edges first again. You really want to, you know, try and look down. 
and see if you can see any bubbles or anything and then just lightly brush over to get rid of any brush marks or bubbles right so that's our top coat done on there um, it's looking quite it's looking quite good there are a few little bubbles in there I might just quickly go over and brush through again uh, like you say you're laying off you just lightly run your brush through it'll get rid of any brush marks hopefully pop any little bubbles that are in there and make the um, varnish just settle and smooth out perfectly flat so six hours hopefully that's dry and then that'll be done I'm just going to do the other little shelf now for at the back and hopefully this afternoon we might be able to use this thing we'll start putting stuff on it like I say though I've never done anything like this before uh, not with like a varnish anyway, of course I've, I've painted stuff with brushes. But doing a varnish, uh, I've just followed what it says on the tin. It says it needs two or three coats, because it was like, because I'm going to use this as a desk, I was going to give it three coats anyway. Because it's going to probably take some knocks and be used quite a lot. So, yeah, and it says to sand it down over your, after your final coat. Which does make a difference if you sand it down once you start putting that final coat on there you feel how much smoother it is when you're putting that last coat on there so but we'll come back and see what that looks like six hours all right morning another morning we've left this dry this has now been when did we do this we finished this paint and it's about yet yeah, 11 o'clock yesterday morning uh, it's now nine o'clock the next day, so it's had a good 22 hours of drying. It's really, really nice and smooth now. It is nice and smooth now. Maybe feel a couple of little bubbles in there, but I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. In fact, just pour out all the wood grain. Right, and so I've stopped recording there. Um, I didn't have any more footage, but here it is now. Here is the desk. Uh, it's a bit of a mess, but it's Christmas. We've been busy. So this is the offcut I made, the shelf. Yeah, so I just put some of the 80 mil ply up aside. Um, I've forgotten actually I'll put the sides on now. I think I just nailed them. Um, there's nothing down the bottom. They're just resting on a desk. I was planning on um, using like some chrome poles, pole stands under here but in the end I just made up um, this little filing shelf I'm trying to hide up all my uh, paperwork yeah I just made up this little box just to put the paperwork in but yeah the desk is still nice and shiny still doing its job if I didn't have all that stuff underneath there I can push the keyboard out of the way, even partially under. Dusty old thing. You know, got plenty of room now to do other work on there. Uh, the wife's got the other computer downstairs at the moment, but that's where her monitor and computer usually is. So you can see the desk is just long enough to have all the computers and monitors and stuff up here. There's a light. I did up end up putting these uh just these couple of support bars from front to back also did one all the way along the back of there just to start, just to keep the um just to keep those legs straighter uh but that was about it it is it's pretty sturdy it's got a little bit of wobble to it but it's going nowhere but yeah that's about it that is a desk it's perfectly good for my requirements you know all the all the desktops and shelves they're all cut out of um uh, one sheet of 18 mil ply what is it no it's the 2.44 meters by what is it 1.2 meters so yeah 760 plus a 300 had a bit left on the sides to do the side pieces for the shelves so that one sheet was 40 pounds and then the 12 mil ply used that sheet was 
probably only about 10 or 12 pounds. And then obviously, you know, a couple of um, offcuts I had from the floor joists. That was it. So, you know, it's made quite cheaply. It's not the best desk in the world, not the best invention, but it's a lot cheaper than any other computer desk you can buy, especially this size. But that's it for now. Enjoy your Christmas, or I hope you've had a good Christmas. Um, enjoy your new year, and I shall see you in the new year when we start all again, getting this place finished, hopefully. My wife wants a proper Christmas next year with a kitchen we can do a proper dinner in. Thank you for watching. See you again.